What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with the overall market. What I'm going to be predicting to happen for today. I'm going to break down what the option chain is suggesting many other factors and talk about Tesla, SPY, NVIDIA, and the QQQ very, very quickly. But before I break anything down with all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I'm firstly not a financial planner, so take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button at the end of the video if you're interested in it. And if you really, really liked it, this not only benefits me, but it benefits the entire community as a whole. Anyways, guys, I'm running kind of late, so I'm going to try to do this as fast as possible. Looking at the market, I want to make a big adjustment based off the option chain and some historical data. So we have some data coming out, guys. By the way, uh, the imports and exports came out. Month over month, prices are up quite a bit for exports. That's part of why the market has slowed down. Now, we have some industrial manufacturing data coming out about 15 minutes before the market opens. Could cause the market to still gap down, but... At 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, we have the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report coming out. Okay, this is going to cause some high volatility. And my guts tells me approaching this or after this comes out, the market may get a pump. And as the market pumps, I, I don't think it's going to last for the whole day. I think it's going to uh, be a very, very nice pump just to start us off. But it may fade as time goes on because historically, that is what actually tends to happen, especially on the 15th of September. We tend to see the market kind of like pump a little bit, then slow down quite a bit on the 15th historically. So that's when the market tends to change directions historically. Uh, you know how a lot of people say the market may slow down. Uh, I think there's more upside coming first, and then the market may fade uh, very, very soon. Now, looking at some new news, JP Morgan Chase plans to offer digital payroll processing uh, increase to small businesses. This is going to help to bring in more competition. There's been a lot of talk about how uh, the high fuel prices are just hurting airlines in the entire industry. Arm had its IPO, which is awesome, rising nearly 25%. Lots of hype was involved with it. Uh, we're starting to see many United Auto Workers on strike. They're at three key auto plants. Uh, that includes GM, Ford, and a couple of other companies. And I heard Tesla could get involved. We'll have to wait and see on that. And last but not least, uh, the market is still trying to hold up. I think the market is going to make an attempt to push for uh, a large part of today before the market starts to fade. And I think that's very probable based off the options chain and some new adjustments that have been made. So there's a lot of interest at the 451 strike. We saw a, a big increase in the open interest, not to mention the 450. I think we're going to likely see the market push towards the zone very close to 451 or so. Then we might see either a rejection or the market may slow down as time goes on because of the options chain on the put side. I also want to note that historically, the market tends to kind of like start slowing down around this period. And then you can't forget about how we do have a lot of these options. Max Payne is at 440 and the market makers, they're fine with anything. I was talking about that yesterday. If the market drops a little bit, they're fine. If it put, pumps a little bit, they're also going to be fine. Max Payne's at 440, so we could see the market try to approach it. But I don't think we're going to drop that hard whatsoever. I think we're going to pump first and then we may slow down as time goes on. Uh, based off historical data and based off the options chain. Now, I also think that a lot of these shorts are going to try fighting at the very end. So I think what, what, what's going to happen is we're going to see the market pump at first, and lots of these puts are going to be closed. And the market's going to pump, but then as time goes on, the shorts are going to try to double down, and we're going to start to see an attempt to you know push the markets down. And the market makers are going to be okay with it since we're so much above max pain. I think this adjustment is going to be made based off, you know, historical data and based off what we've seen in the past. So my prediction is we're going to see the market. We predicted the market would gap down, basically. And that's what's happening so far. We're going to be looking for a pop and attempt to fill this gap and go a little bit higher, get very close to the 451s to 452. That's a very, very nice pump, by the way. That's a very, very nice pump we're going to witness, in my opinion, for the first hour to hour and a half. Uh, I think that the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report is going to help it pump maybe approaching it or after the report comes out. And then I would say that as time goes on, we may start fading. We may start slowing down. The market may lose some momentum. Uh, volume could be a little slow since it's a Friday, and I'm anticipating us to come right back down. But it won't be too bad. This is what tends to happen on days like this. So I'm anticipating like a pump and a drop for today because of what's we're, the adjustments we're seeing on the options chain and some bearish divergences developing. So looking at SPY, I just want to mention that on the 30 minutes time frame, we dropped pretty hard on the RSI. So if we get this pump and if we do try to break 451, this high right here, I think we're going to establish a bearish divergence intraday. That's what I'm thinking now because of how much we've dropped in the pre-market. So I'm thinking that as we approach this 200 EMA, uh, we're going to try to like bounce very soon. SPY is going to pump to fill this gap likely. 
which will maybe a little bit higher, but I think the RSI is not going to keep up with this, and we're going to establish a bearish divergence. Then I think that we, we pump like this, then we come right back down and start fading as the day goes on. And I think that the whole market is going to follow this trend. I think that Tesla is going to pump a little bit more and get very close to this $280 area. Uh, I think it has a lot of potential to do so. And I think that as the market fades, Tesla is going to show some relative strength. It may fade a little bit, but it's not going to be as bad. And Tesla is going to try to hold up. But I do anticipate a pump and a dump on Tesla. We could retest this 280 area before rejecting. I think that the entire market momentum is going to affect it. Looking at Apple, we're going to be watching this thing potentially pump towards 178 to 178.9, somewhere between there. And then we might see Apple maybe reject very close to it. Uh, it could be off the 200 EMA very close to 178, but it could be a little bit higher. I would say a little bit higher before this thing rejects. It's already kind of like overbought. And we're also starting to develop a bearish divergence on Apple. So uh, I'm thinking it's going to pump a little bit. We have this like attempt to push up quite nicely towards 178, uh, maybe a little bit higher. And then we may see a rejection as time goes on because of the options chain and a big change that is developed. Uh, looking at the QQQ, uh, the QQQ is looking a little weak in the pre-market, but I think it's going to bounce and attempt to fill this gap. We're going to see it retest 378, maybe get close to like 379.5 around there. I would say the least the 378 should be retested. And then we're going to see it start to drop and come right back down as time goes on, just like SPY. Uh, I think this, based off an adjustment we've seen, based off the bearish divergence that could develop, and based off the changes we're seeing in the options chain and historical data, they're all suggesting something similar. On NVIDIA, we have a potential inverse head and shoulder, but we need to see NVIDIA hold this support right about here. So it's going to be very, very crucial. We're going to be watching to see if this could end up holding, if this inverse head and shoulders holds or not. This is going to be key for NVIDIA. If it breaks below the 200 EMA, then this thing could start sinking even lower. Uh, but for now, what I'm thinking is it's going to bounce off this 200 and start pushing towards 460, reject off that trade sideways and then close a little bit weak as it may fade as time goes on so look for a pop and a drop and i think that's very probable for nvidia i think the vix is going to get ready to bounce it's going to drop first though i think there's going to be more downside for the vix as the market pumps before the vix finds its bottom and really starts to push as we have a bullish divergence developing and then i think that the vix is going to cause the market or i'm sorry the market is going to cause the vix uh to start uh pushing very very soon so watch the vix potentially drop soon as the market pumps okay the market's going to start off very strong then the market's going to fade and the vix is going to start pushing over time that's what i'm predicting and i think that the dollar is giving us more insight the dollar is going to likely reject and start uh cooling off a bit as it's gapping up we're going to watch the dollar drop as the market pumps and the dollar is going to try to find a bottom around 105.25 or if not like 105 flat before it tries to bounce. So I'm thinking that as well for the dollar. I think that the technicals have made a big adjustment for today. So watch for a potential pop in the morning, then a potential, uh, you know, uh, a retest of resistance followed by a fade as time goes on because of what we're seeing in the options chain. All right, so I want to cut the video from here. Thank you all so much for listening. Hopefully this is helpful and that's what I'm predicting now based off what we're seeing in the charts and some adjustments. Uh, please take care everyone and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mark you to the moon because the long term is very bright and get ready for a potential pop then fade. Thank you and peace out.